energy forecast for Saturday, June 22nd. Okay, so the moon is in Capricorn all day. Of course, we just had the full moon in Capricorn pop off last evening at 9.08 p.m. We hit that one degree. We opened up a brand new chapter of this particular karmic storyline that won't come to a completion point, to an ending point, until the second full moon in Capricorn that will close out cancer season. So we're still very much in this full moon window. And because of that, because it's an earth sign, you may be feeling heavy weighted. You might feel the pressure, the weight of the world weighing on your shoulders. You may actually spend more time today trying to talk yourself out of the negative Nancy narrative than anything else. Although obstacles, challenges, issues need to come in our face in order for us to realize what the problem actually is in order for us to fix and actually resolve it, we get a little bit overwhelmed with focusing on what is wrong, what is bad, when on the other hand, on the other side of things, we're still very much focused on where it is that we want to go from here. We may not have the clarity that we want. Again, we have a whole month of this particular storyline to unravel, unpack, unfold, if you will, before we really understand what's going on here. But that solstice energy pushing us into a new timeline, into new soul contracts, into new foreign territory that, of course, we are just starting to adjust to. Put the pieces together start realizing what it is that we're actually dealing with here but the lunar hangover that we get post moon event is definitely being felt here today so with all of that being said there are 12 different aspects popping off here today eight of them are going to involve the moon Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this cancer energy, trying to blend our intuition with our intellect, trying to focus on what actually matters. Yes, we've been given lots of information, lots of different perspectives thrown at us through that Gemini season. Now we have to unpack what actually matters, what we want to focus on, what we have to weed out, what we have to process. And of course, we're doing that by allowing our bodies to feel what it is that we are currently contemplating, what we're debating between. We need that emotional, intuitive response in order to actually gauge where our inner compass needs us to go from here. Mercury's making a semi-square with Uranus, the Great Awakener, in this Taurus energy. So, of course, a semi-square is a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict. The issue here is, of course, Uranus rules over the highest form of our intellect. That's where we connect to the higher realms of intelligence, the divine information source, if you will. Mercury rules over the lower level intellect that connects us to the world around us. Basically, it's the egoic programming that we are tapping into. So first of all, the insights, the clarity, the intuitive vision that we are currently tapping into is something that we're not making sense of right now in our lower level intellect. We feel a pull in a different direction. We feel like something is changing. But at the same time, when we take a good look around in our physical realms, there's not much evidence of that. There may be friction, there may be tension, but we're not seeing the resolution as of yet. And so the back and forth here is that we're trying to understand where it is that some major changes are taking place. We haven't really accepted them as of yet. We are trying to understand what it is that we could do differently, adopt a new perspective, adopt new methods, new ways of doing things. However, Mercury, stuck in cancer energy, we're so attached to continuing doing things the same old, same old way that we're kind of resistant to even opening up our minds to even think about the changes that we could be making in order to align with the futuristic vision that, again, we're still having a hard time kind of defining. And so there's a lot of pressure in the headspace. There's some triggers taking on in the heart space as well because where it is that our higher self needs us to focus and needs us to go, our egoic selves, that lower level intellect, is just refusing to even look in that direction at this particular juncture. So Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, also in this Cancer energy, going to be making a very positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, wisdom, 
who happens to be in this Gemini energy. So basically, this is a cha-cha-cha. This is a struggle. We're still dealing with Gemini energy because Jupiter is all up in that headspace trying to debate some extreme choices, some extreme decisions, some extreme concepts that are very dualistic, very polarized in nature. So the seesaw effect is going to continue to take place. We're trying to find and strike a balance between what we want to do and what we think we should do. So there is this inner calling, that's the cancer energy that Venus is in, this inner calling of what it is that we want to do, what we need to do in order to feel safe and secure, stabilized in our emotional realm. But Jupiter, of course, in this Gemini energy has us kind of focused on what we should be doing. And of course, that word should implies that we're kind of allowing ourselves to kind of take a perspective outside of ourselves and observe ourselves from a third party and really kind of cast a lot of criticism on what it is that we think we should be doing. So want versus should, definitely going to be a tension-filled energy here this morning. It almost feels like there is one part of us willing to kind of break away from the old, but yet the other part of us still very anchored in the same old, same old. So this is going to kind of set the tone for the day. Again, we take one step forward and then we take one step back. The moon in Capricorn energy, then going to make a very tough interaction with Jupiter. So this is kind of suggesting that again, the moon in Capricorn has this responsibility, has this duty, if you will, where we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders and there's a very long to-do list and there is no fun until work is resolved. And so this particular interaction is definitely going to feed off of, you know, Venus kind of understanding what she wants to do within herself in order for her to feel good, to feel safe, to feel secure. The moon in Capricorn is like, you know what? We don't really care about wants right now. We have a to-do list. We need to get down to the nitty gritty. We have to kind of clear up some of the things that we've been pushing aside in order for us to actually be at a point to do the things that we want to do. Again, you know, all work and no play makes us all go cray cray. So there is a balance that we have to strike there. But the moon in Capricorn is like, let's just hurry up address these concerns, do what we got to do, honor our commitments, get a little bit of productivity going here on our to-do list, and then we can have permission to do what we need to do to bring some fun back, to bring that emotional stability back into our inner realms. The moon is then going to sit across from directly oppose Venus. So this is why, again, we're at odds. There is a sense of responsibility where, again, we can't just kind of F around and have fun and play all day. We can't just, you know, laze around and eat food and watch movies. And sometimes that's what we want to do in order to kind of renew and replenish our soul space. There is this tension, this conflict between what it is, again, that we feel like we have to do versus what it is that we really want to do or need to do for our emotional and spiritual self. The sun now in this cancer energy going to make a very tough interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So anytime that we're interacting with Pluto, we know that that's going to be a little bit intense. We know that there's going to be tension there because growing pains is the name of the game. There is a certain realization right now that adjustments need to be made. They have to be made in order for us to grow, to evolve, to improve. But again, the cancer energy that we're sitting in right now, desperately holding on to what once was or what we were hoping things could actually be. And so that attachment to the past is kind of preventing us from making those changes, from making those adjustments, from evolving, from growing, from improving, which of course the Aquarius energy that Pluto is in wants us to do. So this is tense. We don't want to make these changes. We don't want to accept the truth, the facts in this present moment, because many of us are now in a position where life has happened. We are now in situations where we are walking a path that was kind of forced on us. It's not something that we were choosing for ourselves. It doesn't feel good. We don't have the clarity. We don't have, you know, the excitement, the inspiration. Instead, this is like cleanup crew. We have to clean up 
the karmic fragments of the past before we could actually move on. This is going to trigger a lot of fear, a lot of doubt, a lot of insecurity, uh, a lot of energy around quote unquote, what we're losing. We're not losing anything. The universe has just removed some aspects out of our lives that we had no business attaching ourselves to in the first place. So there's not a real loss there. You can't lose something that wasn't meant for you to begin with. What we are doing is we are graciously releasing and purging the aspects of our lives that are blocking us from actually doing what it is that our heart and our soul needs us to do. So there may be this element where we feel like we're taking a couple of steps back where we are not really in control or in power of some of the situations and circumstances that now we have a responsibility to kind of sort through. But there is this aha moment on where it is that eventually we've got to shit or get off the pot here, make some changes and make those adjustments in order to get on with it. We can't sit around crying over spilled milk for too long when we're lactose intolerant. We shouldn't be drinking the milk anyways. Okay, I know that's quite an analogy, but that's kind of where it is that we're at. The moon in Capricorn then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn. Saturn rules over the Capricorn energy. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, system structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline is in this Pisces energy trying to wrap up a 30-year cycle. Heads up, if you haven't listened to the June energy forecast as of yet, you really need to because Saturn is about to go retrograde here. And so it's very important that now we're in this solstice energy, karmic reset. We're in this cancer season about the karma that we have kind of accumulated along the way. We just had the full moon in Capricorn that Saturn ruled over, illuminating the blockages, the challenges, the problems, the issues that we're desperately holding on to, even though they weren't meant for us. And this is a aha moment, a realization on where it is that the tides are now changing, where the wheel of fortune is now turning into our favor. But at the beginning, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like we're being kicked while, our, while we're down. The moon interacting with Saturn is kind of a good reality check. It brings us down to this present moment. It grounds us. It anchors us. It shows us where it is. The chapters are ending. They're closing. Whether we want them to or not, it doesn't really matter. Our higher self is in control of this and our higher self knows what we have to move away from, what we have to pivot away from in order to actually start pursuing the path that we were meant to be walking. And so this particular energy is giving us a little bit of clarity, let's say, on what we have to actually come to terms with, what we ha actually have to accept, what we actually have to close the door on in order to start building something new in our lives. The moon is then going to try beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, yes, even our anger, but this is a positive interaction, so there shouldn't be any of that. Mars is in Taurus energy, a fixed earth sign. The moon in Capricorn is a cardinal earth sign, so there is this trine, a gentle nudge in the right direction. Now, we are starting to see where it is that there's a little peak of motivation, a little bit of excitement, little bit of inspiration where there's a new determination coming over us in order to do what we have to do to close the door on these particular remnants, on this debris, on this fragmented energy that we're trying to move away from. And of course, Mars in this Taurus energy, stubborn as hell, hell bent on a certain path, on a certain plan. Yes, we are going very low and slow in a different direction, but again, we're building, cultivating the kind of self-esteem, self-confidence, warrior type of mood and attitude that we're going to need in order to, again, cut the cords with the past and slowly but surely start making some progress in a new path, in a new direction. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Uranus, the great awakener. So we may kind of find a certain point where, yeah, okay, we're building this energy. We have no clue where it is that we're going from here. We know where it is that we're not going back. We know what we're not falling back into. We know what is no longer possible for us because, again, we see those endings, those finalities, that completion point very much in our face at this point. But the Iranian energy is trying to kind of show us the new path, show us the clarity, show us the new path and direction. We're just not seeing it. 
because the Cancer energy has us focused on the past. Capricorn energy is kind of anchored in the past too. And so again, these two elements kind of stick to what is tried, tested, and true. And Uranus, on the other hand, wants anything but what it is that we have been doing. So there's a little bit of confusion. There's a little bit of conflict within us because emotionally speaking, we're not ready to think about the future. We're not ready to think about what we could do differently. We are still very stuck, very fixated on where things went wrong, what we could have done differently. Spoiler alert, you couldn't have done anything differently. They weren't supposed to stay in your life. That job wasn't supposed to be yours. That situation was not favorable to your higher purpose. So stop crying over it. Accept those terms that something better is just waiting around the corner. And the quicker that you can resolve these particular issues and accept the fact that that was not meant for you and pivot into a new path and direction, the quicker you're going to see grace and ease actually swoop into your life. The moon and Capricorn then going to sit across directly oppose Mercury. Mercury is the ruler of the mental plane in that Cancer energy. And now the Capricorn and Cancer axis is being aspected once again. Our heart space, the moon, not on the same page as our head space. Mercury's our head space. Mercury's in Cancer energy. We're all up in the fields. We're having flashbacks, memories just crashing upon us. We are essentially focused on the past on what we thought it was going to be. The moon, on the other hand, and Capricorn energy emotionally doesn't even want to think about a lot of these circumstances. We want to keep ourselves busy. We want to be productive. We want to see some progress. We don't really want to deal with emotional matters, which is a very hard thing to run from here in cancer season. So our hard space focused on our to-do list, focus on what we have power and control over in our physical realms. Our headspace, Mercury, all caught up in the past, in the fields, what could have been, what should have been, where it is that, again, we still haven't really accepted that certain doors are closing. The moon then gets into the boxing ring, squares off with the north node in Aries energy. We get this square because, of course, there's cardinal energies here. And we see that the Capricorn energy and the Aries energy, they're not really getting along. Why? Well, because the moon and Capricorn, again, very anchored in this present moment, but has a disposition of looking back in the past. The North Node trying to get us on the right path. And in Aries energy, this is a futuristic energy. We don't really want to look at the future right now. We're having a hard time processing and accepting the past. So there is this element where we're not seeing the opportunity for growth. We're not seeing the opportunity to move forward. We don't even care about moving forward right now because we would rather sit and cry and whine over the past. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter. Thank goodness for this. This is going to help get us out of that earlier funk, that earlier tension. We are again starting to kind of take on the more positive of narratives, the more positive of perspectives. We're starting to contemplate the choices, the options that we have before us, especially in understanding that we're semi-exhausted with thinking about the past in this moment. And so the only thing that we can do is pivot, start thinking about the future. Now we're starting to see where there's an opportunity to move on, to have some growth, to put some things behind us. This is a better mood, a better attitude. The last thing that we have going on here today is Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, getting into the boxing ring and squaring off with that north node in Aries energy. So first of all, we are going to be overthinking a lot. We are going to be just thinking about all the things that we don't have power and control over. We are going to try and make sense of things that will never be made sense of. We are trying to kind of, I'm going to say analyze the situation again think about what it is that we could do differently not realizing that we couldn't do anything differently because those particular chapters were 100 percent meant to end and we are just going to be banging our head against a wall trying to make sense of things that karmically speaking you can't make sense of this is the back and forth this is the up and down this is the crossroads where we're kind of beating ourselves up and breaking ourselves down for no good damn reason. 
This is a time where we are not thinking clearly. We are not even speaking to ourselves in a positive manner. We have a very tainted, very skewed perception of the world around us. And therefore, we are likely not going to be communicating as confidently, as effectively as we would like. A lot of miscommunications, definitely shitstorm energy here. If you want to start a fight, the energy is there for you. However, that is definitely going to hinder your growth and hinder the process of coming to terms of acceptance with what is no longer a possibility or a potential in our storyline. So we could be all over the place. We could kind of spread ourselves a little bit thin, trying to distract ourselves from our thoughts and from our emotions. And that, of course, is just going to put us in a difficult situation to feel like we have control because, of course, we're going to be overwhelmed with our headspace, with our heart space, and with our to-do list. 